Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. We have a new format. We have moved. We are formally the Ladies Power Lunch Coffee Break. And now that we've been invited to be a part of the Win Win Woman family, we are now Grow Your Business Smarter, Live Your Optimal Life. We're at a brand new time. So instead of us being at 11.30 on a Friday, we're now at 11 o'clock eastern 8 a.m standard um pacific time and we're on a tuesday so new network new time new day all sorts of new things but guys th for those of you who know me you know i'm one note i am the same old davia that you know and all i love to talk about is women coming together and supporting each other so if you're here for that if that feels like the sort of thing that you're all about then you are in the right place i want to say thank you to everybody who's joining us here in the studio today i welcome you and i'm looking forward to the conversation that we'll have once i'm done talking about the little things that i came to talk about today so you might have seen our topic for today, and it might have kind of pinged you, jogged your thought pattern a little bit. We're talking about what is it that we're doing? Are we hanging out with people who are great collaboration partners, or are we hanging out with people who are energy vampires? What, what exactly is it that we're doing? And I think this is going to be a really, really engaging discussion for us to have together. So I'm really looking forward to you guys sticking around until the end. And let's get into it, because I think this is something that we all kind of have a little bit of post-traumatic stress around. We've all had an we've had an episode or a time in our lives when we've come together with somebody else with the greatest of intention with feeling like yes this is going to be great and we've been bitten by the proverbial energy vampires so I'm really looking forward to hearing your experiences and also sharing some of ours so before I start, I want to say a big, big, big thank you to Win Win Women for inviting me to be a part of their amazing network. For those of you who are new to the Win Win Women network, who you've never watched any of the shows, the amazing shows that are on the network, I invite you after you've done watching my show, of course, and always tuning into my show, of course, please do check out some of the very, very outstanding shows that are on the network. They're all great. They're all here to support women and to help us to have the things that are important to us be heard and be spoken about. I feel like the more that we're getting that sort of message out into the zeitgeist, the better the world will be because we cannot complain about the general conversation not including us if we're not including ourselves in the conversation who hears that who understands that who gets that right right here so thank you win win women and thank you to all you heart-centered women in business who are tuning into this kind of show to hear what we have to say so I want to talk a little bit about the thing that I talk about all the time, and that is collaboration. You know, I've shared my story before, and I'll just touch on it again a little bit. I started out thinking that I was going to be a superstar in pharmacology. Somebody posted on Facebook this morning, one of my very, very dear friends who actually was the one who encouraged me to write this book, Grow Smarter, she posted on Facebook asking, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up and what are you now? When I was growing up, I wanted to be a superhero. I imagined, and yeah, I know, not the traditional superheroes with the capes and stuff, even though that's great and come Halloween, I may show up on the show all dressed up. It might happen. If we get enough people voting for this to happen, we'll see how it goes. But I wanted to be somebody who made a difference. I remember when I was really, really tiny, my, my dad came home and he was really excited. He had just, his team, they were working on developing something that was going to help people in third world countries have more food 
availability. And they had had a wonderful experience at work that day. They'd had a breakthrough. It was really, really outstanding. And he came home and it was, it couldn't have been more than seven, eight tops. And he came home and he was so excited. And he sat me and my sister down and he said to us, I did this amazing thing today with my team. What is your contribution going to be to the world? And oh my goodness, let me just tell you, at seven or eight, my contribution to the world was playing with my Barbies. So it didn't really hit me in the way that I think he intended. But one thing I can tell you is that it never left me. I never forgot it. And so when it became time for me to go to school and do the things, I thought to myself, okay, yeah, I do want to be a superhero. I do want to make a difference. I do want to contribute. And my intention for doing this ended up being going into that pharmacology route, going the route of developing a drug. That was my intention, developing a drug that was going to just help people in the world and cure something important and do something really, really serious. Well, I did go down that pharmacology route. I did work for Big Pharma for probably about 14 years. And there are some projects that I worked on that were really, really, I thought, very beneficial. But I also had one of those moments where you come to yourself and you realize that there is another option for you. There's another way to be a superhero, if you will. And so I ended up leaving pharma and going into private practice, patient care, that sort of arena, but in a more holistic way. And now I've even found a way to work with clients in a way that is even more holistic in that transformational space. And so saying all of this to say two things, one, what you started out doing doesn't have to be where you end up. But two, my road has taken a lot of twists and turns, but the main point of what I have been focused on all my life continues to be the same. It's the same thing. I wanna make sure that whatever I'm doing is focused on helping other people to live their optimal life. And so that's what this whole show is all about. I talk a lot about collaboration because my experience when I left corporate and came into this whole working by myself world, which a lot of us as solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, small business owners, as women, we end up in this space where we can feel kind of siloed. We can feel kind of alone. We can feel like we're really pushing against a glass wall, not a glass ceiling, but a glass wall in terms of achieving the things that we want to achieve in business. And I had the distinct pleasure and opportunity to meet some amazing women who we sat down, we had lunch. You guys know the story of Ladies Power Lunch. We sat down, we had lunch. It was the best lunch ever. These six women from all different walks of life, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different businesses, we all got together. And when we got together, magic happened in the room. Everybody was helping everybody else. There were referrals going left and right. There were people who were helping people to find the resources they needed, like babysitters or elder care personnel or whatever it was that we needed. Everybody left that table that day with exactly what they needed. And what that taught me is that there is no need to do it alone. There's never a need to do it alone. But then we come back to this question. In making that decision not to go it alone, what does that mean? Does that mean that we just invite all comers and anybody who wants to collaborate with me is going to be a great collaboration partner? Or does that mean that we have to be very discerning with choosing our collaboration partners? So I like to, I'm, I'm a science nerd, guys. You can take me out of the private practice setting, take me out of the lab and put me in this transformational space, but I am still this nerdy girl at heart. Anybody who's a nerdy girl at heart, I see you, I am you. And so I want to remind you, I just want you to close your eyes, take a minute and go back to elementary school biology. 
I know nobody wants to do that, but stay with me. The best part of elementary school was biology class, right? Yeah? No? It's just me? Okay. Well, here's the thing. You remember this thing that you learned about commensalism, about in the wild, how animals get together in different ways and they form different relationships. Well, guess what? It's the wild, baby, because we are exactly the same in our business relationships. Stay with me. I'll explain it to you. So you have your typical predator-prey relationship. Everybody knows what that's about, right? And if you want to take it into that business context, I would invite you to think of your sleazy used car salesperson. Now, if you are a used car salesperson, I am not talking about you. I'm talking about the ones out there who they know it's a lemon and they're selling you a lemon and pretending that it's gold embossed, right? They are here to prey on people's insecurities. And then good thing there's so many of us out there who are gullible because they're gonna prey on you, get what they need to get from you and then go on to the very next one. And that's just how they operate, of course. If you're here, if you're watching this show, I know for sure that you're not falling into that category. But you see the parallels between that predator-prey relationship and how there are some unethical business people out there, right? Everybody understands that. Then there's competition, and everybody knows about competition. I mean, when my babies were going to go to preschool, preschool, not even kindergarten, guys, preschool, there was competition in the air because all the moms were like, oh, well, my baby can do this and my baby can do that. And it was it was hilarious. And when I think back to it, we all started with this competitive mindset way back before we could even talk. We were born and we heard about Apgar scores. OK, maybe we didn't, but our parents did. And we had to compare how we were doing versus the other babies who were born, how they were doing. So competition starts really early. And if you want to take it to that business context, I would invite you to think about what about think about a small town and then in comes this big mega store and you have your mom and pops and the mega store is going to have a ton of lost leaders and run the mom and pop out of business and, you know, we hear about crushing the competition and checking in with what your competition's doing and all of this fun stuff. That's the way I would relate the competition that happens in nature with what happens in business. And then there is symbiosis. But guys, it's not one size fits all for symbiosis. They're not all win, 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 win as we like to get when we have what is a true collaboration. And remember we talked about win, 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 win. Let me just refresh you. If you are in a relationship with another person and we're talking about being in a relationship with another person in business, then you're gonna want it to be win, 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 win. Just like win, win, woman, am I right? So you have you winning because this is a business. You need to be resourced so that you can be a resource. You need to make sure that whomever you're partnering with, they're winning too. You want to make sure that your customer is winning. This is in absolute opposition to what happens in that predator-prey relationship or even in that competitive relationship because in that competitive relationship, you're not really customer-focused. You're really, really focused on what the other people are doing. Am I right? And then that last win, which is my favorite win, that win for the higher good, for the greater good, for the raising of the vibration of the universe. We wanna make sure that that is also in place. And so I wanna talk about mutualism and that's the relationship that happens in nature where one animal benefits, but the other animal benefits as well. If you look in a textbook, they might talk about some, you know, like sharks or um, whales that also have little plankton that clean their teeth or something like that. I don't know. It's been a long time since elementary school, guys. Go look it up in a book if you really, really, really want to dive deeply into this. 
But if you want to understand the relationship between mutualism and what happens in business, the example I love to give, my favorite example, is the example of one of my mentors, one of my very, very first mentors that I had when I started in private practice. And she was a business coach, and she was in a mutualistic relationship with a financial advisor. And all day long, they were just referring business back and forth. So she had a client who was a woman in business or a person in business, let's just say, and the person in business needed financial help, which, which person in business doesn't need to know more about how to manage their money. If you found one of those people, they're probably already in finance, right? So she would refer her people over to get some financial support. And the same thing was the financial collaborator that she had was referring her financial clients over for business advice and all day long back and forth they would go everybody won in that situation because of course she won her partner won they all got more clients and the clients won as well because they got a better more robust service and then the greater good one because all of these amazing business women got a chance to have better businesses and to serve their clients and then their clients could be better and serve the people that they were meant to be serving and on and on it would go in a ripple effect to the point where it's even benefiting us in this conversation today because we're having an opportunity to talk about this and it helped my former mentor to go from having, and she told us this story openly, so I feel really, really happy to share it with you, having an eviction notice tacked onto her place of business, which was also her home, to being a $50 million a year business. So guys, don't poo-poo this idea of collaboration, because it can really, really boost your bottom line, and it can also help to raise the vibration of the planet. I feel like that's that's the true win, 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 win right there. Then there's the commensalism, which is a sort of situation where one person benefits, the other one's like, eh, it doesn't hurt them, but it's not really a big deal. I love to use an example of a friend of mine who is a pediatrician. She was a pediatrician for years in a group that was all pediatricians all the time. It was fine for her, but then she got an offer to be a pediatrician in a practice of OBGYNs. And here's how that worked so, so well for her. Because as an OBGYN, you're having patients who are having babies all day long, right? And you can always send them over to go find their own pediatrician. But what would happen if you had a pediatrician right in your office and you could say, hey, why don't you make an appointment with pediatrician over there and talk to her about what's going to happen when your baby comes? Not me as a client. I benefit tremendously because which new mom do you know who doesn't want the opportunity to sit with a baby doctor who is so experienced to allay all her fears, right? So who's winning in this situation? Pediatrician's winning because she's got new clients coming in every single day. True story, because babies are born every day. Who else wins? The moms win and the babies win. I feel like the greater good wins too, because with so many wins happening, it's a great thing. For the OBGYNs, it was because, eh, I mean, they could have survived without it. It was nice to have, but it wasn't a must have. So you see the, that subtle difference between that commensalism and the mutualism. And of course, there's that parasitism. And I'm from, my parents are from the Caribbean. I lived in Jamaica for a really long time. There's this bush that grows on people's hedges and it's yellow and it causes the bushes, it causes the hedges to just shrink away and die. And eventually, it also dies because once it's sucked out all the life out of its host, it doesn't really have much left to do unless it gets thrown onto another hedge. And so that's the sort of situation that happens with parasitism. These are the energy vampires that I'm warning you guys about. Friend of ours, amazing friend, love her so much. She shared this story with me and I want to share it with you. If you want to hear the full story, I invite you to go on over to our Ladies Power Lunch show and you can listen to her share this story. 
in its entirety. But she talks about a time when she was going to have an event and she's a big time collaborator. She collaborates, she's in finance, but she collaborates with a lot of different types of businesses. So she comes to this particular collaboration, making sure that her heart is in the right place and she's ready to go. But here's what happened. She put her money up for, you know, renting the venue and all the things that you have to spend money on ahead of an event, promotion, all of this. She really gave it her all. Kind of reminds me of being in high school, being in college and doing these projects, these group projects where I was the one who was doing all the work because I am not going to be the one to get a low grade because of somebody else. So I was doing all the work and doing all the things. Let me just tell you, right? And we'd get a good grade, but it was kind of all on me. She experienced that very, very same experience. Basically, she put in her all. She put in her all. She got really close to the day of her event and then her collaboration partner, who got a lot of pre-exposure um, as a result of promoting the event. She got a lot of new clients, all of this. She decided very close to the day of the event that she was not going to participate. And so she didn't participate financially. She didn't participate in terms of the presentations that were supposed to happen. She didn't participate as a in terms of the organization of the event. And so my dear friend was left holding the bag. Of course, overachievers that we are, she still took it to the finish line. She still put on a great show and she still ended up having a positive event. But what happened is that it was kind of a lose-lose because it could have been so much better if both partners had come to the table in a way that was synergistic, in a way that was mutualistic, in a way that was a win, 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 in a way that was a true, 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 true collaboration. So I promised you on our last episode that we would spend a couple of minutes talking about what it really takes to go from being alone to being brilliant in your business. What it really takes for you to have a collaboration that's a true collaboration, one that has all those four wins that we talk about. And I outline the basics of this in my book, Grow Smarter, and I'm going to share them with you here today. The first thing that I invite us all to do is to ask. And no, it's not what you're thinking. I'm not sending you out there to go ask other people if they want to have a collaboration with you. First thing you have to do is you have to go within. And you have to ask yourself, inner being, source, however you term the conversation that you have internally, you're going to want to go inside and you're going to ask, what do I want from a collaboration? What are the things that are meaningful for me? What are the things that are my values? What are my non-negotiables? You have to know yourself before you know anybody else. And if you go into a relationship without knowing what it is that you want, then you're gonna find out when you get there. Am I right? Like it's really, really important to know yourself. So I feel like you can't even go anywhere. You can't even start having conversation with other people. You can't even start thinking about what sort of collaboration partners you want until you know what it is that you want out of a collaboration. What's gonna make this beneficial for you? What's gonna make it not beneficial for you? What are the things that if this is not happening, you're not wanting to be a part of it? You really, really need to have that very clear, have clarity on that before you take that step. Step two, which is so, so closely related to step one, is alignment. So let's say 
you figured out what you want, you know where you're going on this. Are you in alignment with this idea of collaboration? The people that you are partnering with, are they in alignment? Are your conversations in alignment? What's really happening here? Step three, all in. And this is not just to make sure that the other partner is all in. What about you? So I'll give you an example. I was asked very, I would say probably in January to be a part of a summit that's upcoming. And I said, yes, very firm yes from my heart. And here's why, because it's a summit that's about women and it's about supporting women. Don't you think that I would be absolutely a yes for that? But guess what? Guys, I had to send an email. I'm being very transparent with you, very, very transparent with you right now. I had to send an email to the organizers just this week, yesterday, in fact. I think I sent it on Monday. Today's Tuesday. So yeah, just this week. Had to send an email to say, hey, guys, I'm going to take a step back from supporting this summit because I am not all in on this summit. I have so much going on right now and I underestimated what you would require of me and I also overestimated my availability. I apologize profusely. I promised them that I would continue doing the things that I had committed to up to that point. But in order for this collaboration to have positive energy flowing towards it, I could not continue to be a collaboration partner knowing that I'm not all in. So yes, it's about the other people being all in, but it's about us too, making sure that we're where we should be. And then the last two pieces are assignment, which just means that we want to make sure that everybody who is a part of the collaborations doing the thing that lights them up, the thing that's their genius, the thing that is brilliant for them. For me, with this particular collaboration that I just stepped back from, I was invited to be in charge of collaboration and community. Of course, that's where I shine. That's what I love. That's the thing I talk about all the time. So that would have been absolutely appropriate for me if I'd had just a little bit more time in my schedule. And then the last thing is apps. Let's talk about apps and resources because let's say you and I are in a collaboration. I'm good at collaborations, I'm good at community, you're good at something else, whatever it is that is your genius. But there's some things that are outside of our realm of genius. And so what we wanna do is to make sure that we employ the resources, the applications, we get the people on board who are able to cover those pieces because you never want a person in a collaboration to be overloaded, overworked, am I right? So that's basically what I wanted to share with you today. As always, I want to pull a card just to give us a nice little thought for the day. And the card I pulled today, I'm going to share it with you here. It's one of these little tiny cards that I love because they just give you a great thought for the day in a moment. And it says career. It's time to add extra energy to your career area. Maybe try something new. I wonder if that's something new that you could try would be to try injecting more collaborations into your business. Thanks so much for watching with us today. I look forward to chatting with you next week. And next week, we're going to dive really, really deeply into the five pillars of collaboration and just show you exactly how to execute so that you can go from being alone in your business to being absolutely abundant. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys on the next show.